Hello everyone, we're going to be going through many different posts on the R. Kurosanji subreddit. A lot of these are going to be drama posts and opinions and allegations and such. Unless there is other proof, take it as an opinion piece and take it as allegations. And I will have as many sources as possible. But if no sources are there, then that means it's just an allegation, a shiitake post, whatever you want to call it. It is to be taken as an opinion. Thank you. A little bit of a clarification here, since this is something that does need to be clarified because there are people out there who uh, will try to attack the livers themselves in the situation with Virtual Rhapsody, as I said in my last video. I try to make it as clear as possible. It is not the livers' fault. The livers are at the beck and call of the managers, handlers, whatever you want to call them. They are not the ones who dictate how much time they have. The ones who dictate how much time they have is Nidhi Sanji and the event planners and all the planning staff and all that kind of stuff. So if someone is being pushed out, it is Nidhi Sanji staff doing that, whoever they put to push people out and to tell people the time that it is. Now, this person apparently also saw that there was some negative negativity going around against the livers and wanted to also clarify that kind of stuff. So I found that someone has misinterpreted my post on the 428 regarding Virtual Rhapsody Singapore event and attempted to incite hatred towards Nidhi Sanji. Well, yeah, of course we're going to do that. That's not a misunderstanding. No, no, no. It's Nidhi Sanji who messed up because they mishandled the whole thing. Let's say there's event staff there, okay? Let's say that Nidhi Sanji paid event staff there. Uh, they're the ones who paid them. They're the ones who are supposed to have dictated what happens during that time. They're the ones who are supposed to have dictated, you know, under no circumstances do you let them go in more, longer than 60 seconds or longer than 90 seconds or whatever it is. Of course, they have uh, usually an, an event uh, planner like Nidhi Sanji would have some kind of uh, leeway. They would give some kind of leeway. It's like, yeah, you could get five or 10 seconds extra if necessary for inside and out, that type of stuff. Total 90 seconds, you know, that type of thing. Here, I want to clarify that this satisfaction expressed this post is towards the organizers of Virtual Rhapsody Singapore event, not towards Nidhi Sanji or streamers. I would say it is still Nidhi Sanji's responsibility, not the streamers themselves, of course, but Nidhi Sanji themselves because they're the ones who dictate what the event staff does. And, um, okay, let's just say for the sake of argument, it's not Nidhi Sanji's fault. You know what they could do? They could be like, you know what, as an apology, we're going to give you this merch or, you know, where it's an apology. We're going to take uh, the amount of time that we took away from you away from the ticket. Of course, it does, still doesn't make things better, but a partial refund is still better than nothing. Currently drafting a letter to Nidhi Sandy expressing the same stance as this announcement. The issue lies with the event organizers due to consideration of length. It will take some time. I think the thing is, uh, if you oversell your stuff, if you oversell the tickets, then you're going to run into this issue. That's what I'm saying. Nidhi Sanji is the one that's responsible. They're overselling tickets. They oversold some. They undersold others. They should have had a cap. They should have been like, okay, 90 seconds plus about 20 or 30 seconds for people to pre prepare inside of there uh, to get in and out and that kind of stuff per event. Maybe limit the tickets for the time that you have. Let's say you have two hours to do this. Limit the tickets for 120 minutes, 120 seconds, which is like two minutes. Okay, then you can only have 30 people, you know, or you can only have like, you know, 60 people overall, not 120 or 140 or however many they had. Because, I mean, if you're doing it right, if you're smart, you're going to do it that way. Uh, the English text in that image wasn't written by me either. Hope this article can clarify my position. Thank you for your attention. Of course, we knew that that was going to be a translated portion, but it still is under Nidhi Sandy's responsibility, in my opinion. And this person says, event used the name of Nidhi Sanji brand. Almost all the old top talent was present. Event organizer is entirely at fault. But doesn't really excuse the brand owner for not supervising it properly. Especially when the event organizer literally borrowed many of your remaining top talent. It is easy to just swift the blame on so entirely to Niji. Uh, when, when Niji already pocketed the money from the EO, event organizer to borrow their name and talents. At best, it is usual case of Niji incompetency to be selective of the the planner to her complaint used to not uh use not in the way as she is intended is normal because she shared it online in public she blames the eo i blame both i absolutely blame both really envy the needy sanji to have such a large group of fans willingly uh become their cash cow and be mistreated that the thing is of course you you do give um I, i'm gonna just give a little bit of leeway to the fan because um, you know, they, they, the event organizer takes a large amount of the blame, pretty much. It, I mean, even Nidhi did express some sorry. It isn't quite a big scandal for such an event. It is like, you should have a little bit more, uh, oversight on what's going on. That's my, that's my main thing. Have main, more oversight. I get a feeling that the event organizer attempted to sort things out beforehand, foreseeing the time limitation. Alas, Nidhi wouldn't get, let them get back on time. Uh, therefore wouldn't get 
back to them on time. So they're, you know, Nidhi Sandhi is known for taking forever to respond. The event organizer was forced to take matters into their own hands without Nidhi's input. Doesn't this sound familiar? Nidhi not responding in a timely manner is a common theme. In short, both are to blame. Yes, both are to blame. And there's a lot of different comments on this one because this is a popular one. So here's the thing. When a brand puts its name behind a convention, it very much has responsibility to ensure things go smoothly and to protect its brand. If a fan receives bad experience with no acknowledgement, chances are they're unlikely to attend future events. Very true. Niji absolutely should have put statement uh, out regarding the issue when it, uh, even if it was 100% the event organizer's fault, they are also responsible for le selecting the event organizer. So they need to address how they plan to prevent issues in the future. Like, yeah, vet your event organizers beforehand. But Nidhi Sanji doesn't like doing that. So that's where we are today. This is a bit of a verification that someone tried to post in regards to that it being staff that cut the times. As I had mentioned before, it could very well be staff. So let's take a look at this. It says, uh, Luka Kanashir, I'm so happy to staff to be a staff that assisted UNV Rhapsody. I did not have time to speak to y'all. Very many tech issues and timing issues, but I know that we've seen since day one. I'm happy to have helped you all. Small potato staff here at v v Rhapsody. First and foremost, I would like to apologize to the people in Luca line. Uh, in fact, that we had to cut some of your timings off. Honestly, y'all are so wholesome. Standing in the meet and greet room showed me how wholesome the fans can be. And I'm sincerely sorry for the inconvenience caused. As a small potato staff, I indeed do not have power to change some things. And I wish for your cooperation. Thank y'all so much for coming. Really made me and the livers day uh, to see the amount of support we all give them. I, in the bottom, bottom here, it says, I feel so bad cutting off meet and greet times for male session during Virtual Rhapsody. I'm not in the position to extend the time while getting pressured by the boss of the venue to wrap everything up quickly. I sincerely apologize for it. So it's, it's, it's things like that, you know, and here where, you know, the code versus reality, people are saying, um, quick look into the profile reveals some interesting new info too, because they apparently were attending as staff. If what they say is true. Things from meet and greet were cut, lots of tech issues, things like that. So it's the bosses up top, but you know, Nidhi Sanji is the one who's responsible for those bosses. And yeah, people were saying it was Nidhi Antis. <clears throat> it wasn't Nidhi Antis. It was actually the bosses, the, the event organizers. As I said, organizers and Nidhi Sanji are the ones responsible for this. Always be weird to me. Nidhi sisters will fight tooth and nail for their Oshis to keep getting abused by the company and having themselves taken advantage of. I mean, if you're getting paid, a lot of times you'll take a lot of things. I don't blame the livers or the talents themselves because it's their job. And a lot of times you don't have a backup. You don't have something to go for or, or you're, you're still doing month to month, you know, paycheck to paycheck type of thing. And losing that paycheck can be a big harm to you. So that's why I'm seemingly going easy on the livers in this situation because they're not really the ones responsible for this. Here's something that someone taking what Quinn said as separate from what Quinn actually said. I think it bears repeating that Quinn makes it implicit Lee very known that he wasn't happy, but also makes it explicitly known that the only VTuber news channel he trusts as someone uh, who actually worked there is one berated for doing positive stories on Niji, talking about Mr. Underhill in this case. Even former Niji Livers has said that this course is dumb as F, Kuro and Quinn as of recent. The truth is just that some Livers get effed over and that's important to talk about, but not in the way it's currently happening. He didn't mince words. He actively went out of his way to name Underhill and to say the others in the space are lacking in, and I quote, journalistic integrity. Now let's see what somebody says that Quinn actually said. He said, I feel like Nidhi's sister twisted Quinn's words a bit. His words were, Underhill, just be reporting on it like normal s. Uh, like nowadays, people, they get a little OD with their journalistic integrity. You know, I feel like Underhill tries to be a bit more nice about things. So he's just saying that Underhill tries to be a bit more nice. And that's normal. That's fine. I have nothing wrong with Underhill or anything like that. He may sway a certain way, but people say I sway a certain way too. So it's all in the eyes of the beholder, I guess. I took Quinn's words to mean that he thinks other news VTubers are too obsessed with journalistic integrity and reporting the truth, bad news. I think he likes Underhill because Underhill is less concerned with journalistic integrity. I don't think it's necessarily that and tries to focus on reporting positive stuff. Figured he probably doesn't want to consume drama or negative news for his own mental health. Servens, uh, Soruevens suggested that OD might stand for overdramatic stuff instead of overdose. Yeah, overdramatic. Yeah, it's definitely overdramatic stuff. Um, seeing the clip now, the tweeter is twisting the words a lot. The guy is saying that he would rather only watch fluff pieces that not thinks that it makes more accurate or true. Uh, just that saying they avoid news because it makes you depressed, not because you think they're lies. Pretty stark difference. And Quinn in no way, shape or form suggests that the other news tubers were lying. Um, yeah, I can understand that. I can absolutely understand that. And I support that if that's what you want to do. You know, go for fluff pieces, go for pieces that keep your mental state high because it is super important to take care of your mental health. It is super important. I always push the, the mental health aspect as well. Take care of your mental health. Do what's right. If you need to take a break from Niji News, if you need to take a break from Niji Sanji overall, do it because your mental health and your health overall matters more than anything. So apparently they have their own rats now. 
a uh, completely baseless assumption that because Hololive has such a good record, they must be hiding something. Uh, did they think that Hololive just doesn't like to F their talents over and cross a person's mind? This is the same thinking conspiracy theorists have about governments hiding stuff from them. So basically, yeah, Vinted is saying uh, things like um, that need basically we're just read what he says. When it comes to arbitrary fandom wars, I think it's a big mistake to go all in on hollow worship. Things do look better right now, but so much of what they do well is just having better PR and a Western fandom who's invested in taking them at their word. We're not invested in taking them at their word. We're actually, like, I actually go against them sometimes. I've gone against them with the, with the Coco incident. I've gone against them with uh, the Mano Alo incident, with the original Mel incident, with the Toa incident. I, I can go on and on. There's incidents happening all the time. But the difference is Hololive actually tries to fix it. When it happens, they see, holy crap, we messed up. The fans really don't like it because us Kaigai Niki, us over here in the West, really hold them to account. Because some of their unicorn things that happen over there, some of the idol type stuff that happen over there, we don't like. I definitely don't like it. They know how to rad radiate positivity and big glossy spectacle. They know how to tell you what you want to hear. They know how to keep former and current talents quiet about a lot of internal workings. Uh, because they're not doing things to basically sabotage their current talents while they're working for them. And they know how to get people to see their CEO as a good CEO because he actually seems to care. At least that's what he shows. I think the generally impressive how they do it, or maybe it's just look a lot better at it by comparison, but they got a hold of the initial major demos in the Western community first, and they gave them a lot of goodwill. Fans do a lot of work for them. Uh, they seem to have forgotten the China incident. The China incident, the Western fans were ready to abandon Hololive en masse. We were all ready to just abandon Hololive if they kept China. We were ready to abandon Hololive if they didn't do something to protect Kiryu Koko and to protect Hachama. If they didn't do anything, we were going to abandon them. And so was a lot of the, well, not so much the, the Japanese crowd and the Asian crowd, but I know that the Western crowd was. But I do I do remember that the Japanese crowd did have a problem with it as well. All whole live numbers are open for the public to see. They don't hide anything. And they do oopsies regularly and wrong printed name on merch, scheduled tweets meet, meet up early, and on many more. But they also apologize quickly. Yago's interviews are also easily accessible in many platforms. They have regular blogs and P, for PR stuff. Their staff are also appearing regularly to talk about their job. One CN anti, if I remember correctly, the account was FBK Go Graduate back in Taiwan controversy, tried to dig on Yagu, cover and Fubuki tax evasion theory for 1.5 years. He found nothing. Uh, isn't literally like unique merch that hollow uh, collectors would love to get a hold of? Kind of like Talon made a mistake in one of their myriad signatures they do. What's their point? Are they just admitting how incompetent Niji is as a company? That's the thing. Niji just doesn't have good PR. That's pretty much is what it is. And Hololive actually tries to fix their PR when there's mistakes, not do a black uh, stream, 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 and do a fake apology. Some positive news for once. Uh, look who follows Mint. All these people that follow Mint. Of course, Michi Mochi V follows. Uh, VTuber TBA, Avid Second, of course, regular people. Uh, Ray Muendo follows. You know, Raymond, it, it's she's allowed to follow whoever the hell she wants, and she's allowed to support whoever the hell she wants. Uh, Niji may not be happy about it, but there we go. Asaya Synchronicity, of course. Uh, Sayu, the actual voice actor, 2.0 arc. Uh, Miori Celesta. Uh, Maria uh, from V4 Murai. Takanashi Kiara, of course, because they've been friends for a while. You know, Made Mint slash Not Pomo. Uh, they've been friends for a long time. Kei San Socho, of course. Amalie. Big VTubers are following her. I'm glad that big VTubers are following her. She deserves that type of attention. Big W. Man, aka Pogmu, was uh, taking more and more Ws in the end. Uh, just a reminder, the same guilty by association follow thing is not too reliable. Exactly, you won't find a very different list. Shy Lily followers, for example. Uh, still awaiting Kiara X Mint collab. Uh, wait, Raymu follow Mint. Will she be safe considering what happened to JP side? The follow graduated person or maybe Niji fa finally team and let them be. I think Niji's too worried about other stuff right now, like making money, that they're going to be worrying about who their library follows, especially if their library follows a ton of people. It's not going to be a big thing, I don't think. I think people are trying to dig into trying to find something bad happening. You know what I mean? I wonder if she did it by mistake. She follows a lot of ex Nijis on her PL, even tweets them sometimes. I don't think it was a mistake. I think maybe it could possibly be my little rat here is um, that she is just tired of the BS that's going on and she wants to follow whoever the heck she wants to follow, which she has a right to. That's my little rat there. Started playing Metal Gear Solid September 9th and she played Metal Gear Solid 2 and 3 to honor Pomo's memory. She will finish Metal Gear Solid 3 someday. She made a member post on YouTube about what game I, do I want to play and she said, Metal Gear Solid 3, I'm not asking for myself, but for my Kamiyoshi. She would really be proud of you if you completed one of her favorite games of all times. That's what someone told her. She's a huge Metal Gear Solid fan, just like me. In response, uh, Reimu gave a heart as she knew who's a Kamiyoshi. Oh, this person's Kamiyoshi. This person wrote it. Okay, East Ad wrote it. Never mind. She has a long talk with Pomo and Callie in, in call-in stream. 
which last time they talked for a long time, Snap is 49-48. Pomo wasn't very close to Reimu, like she wasn't Lazalite, Nina, Selen, but they both loved each other and respect each other, which is good. Uh, Reimu got kind of kind of warm heart, and she loves ex Niji Sanji VTubers. She asked management to add Nina's voice in the AR Live, which shows that she still loves Nina. Um, and the fact that she has Doki Bird and Apex Legends friend, some little positivity. I don't think it's anything negative. I think it's something positive as well that Reimu Endo is following, which is fine. I mean, let them follow whoever they want. And I really don't like it when a company tries to stop that. So I'm glad the company didn't. At least I hope they don't. Pretty quickly, we're going to go over some um, things, some little memes here. Let's take a look at this one. Hey, butters, we're here. Are you ready? I'm scared, but I know my country needs me. This is it, butters. We have to be strong. We're taking down those goddamn Chinese right now. Because we're going to make them think we're one of them. Here, put these teeth in. And just say hello and breathe a lot. Oh, Hi, God, no. Bing, bong, ching, chong. Bing, bing, hello, please. I'm done. I'm done with this one. This one, this one's just, it, it's because it's South Park. It's, it's a little, it's a little offensive. But let's see what they do. They go in there. They try to infiltrate. They try to do all this kind of stuff. And, uh. Yeah, what are you doing? Um, it's just it's just basically the the Chinese food restaurant place. They're going to start. Oh no, asking people in the in the D. No, nope, 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 nope. They're deporting Billy Billy about five k CCV and only thirteen tier one Billy Billy paid members, which is around five hundred USD per month before any cut. If we calculate the cut, it makes about one hundred seventy USD per month. I think that's really her end. If we compare the Mika Neko, who also debuted in April in Billy Billy, she has six tier two members, three hundred forty three tier one members. And one monthly fee of 200 RMB. Uh, let's see, about 80K RMB is 15K USD per month. That's really good for me, Kaneko. Holy crap. Cut and Billy Billy. She keeps half of it, so she speaks no Chinese. And her stories are well known in China, as well as, and including her marriage and divorce with Mafu Mafu, since it's very active on Billy Billy too. So, yeah, she got bested by Mikineko, according to this person. Of course, this is uh, un unproven because they don't show any actual evidence here. But, you know, take it as you will. And we have the next one which is basically what happened with Mika Melatika. Everyone is assuming it's Niji Sanji. I assumed it was Niji Sanji. It may or may not be. Um, help in sorting taxes. I need help in sorting my taxes. You said you'd help sorting my taxes. It's just our taxes, not yours. And yeah, the nature, natural order finds a way. Can the yacht sink any faster? Just accidentally explode. What the F? Uh, Niji almost cartoonishly evil at this point. Yeah, so it is pretty much is. The possible, it, probably why they pulled out an ID branch entirely. Holy effing S. That's what people are saying. That's what people are asking me. Um, I'm not sure if this is why they pulled it out of ID because they've been making bad moves. I think it was just they weren't promoting the people in ID very much. So ID wasn't making very much money. So they pulled out of ID. I think that's what pretty much was happening. Uh, because on the contrast, Hololive has been promoting the F out of ID. It's reporting, holy crap, they've been promoting a lot out of ID. Someone eating cheese balls was a whole thing of cheese balls. Had more people show up than the virtual rhapsody. All right, this this is this is this is the meme that the person is saying that they showed up more than the virtual rhapsody. Dude's living his dream. Probably more entertaining too, not positive. Uh, well, technically it makes sense. The free event would have more people attending than the paid one. So I don't know what you're making it sound like. Exactly, it's a free event, so that's different. Uh, that said, yeah, cheese ball man had better production quality than VR rhapsody. Um, Vuvuzela or however you spell it worked pretty well. The PA system. Uh, yeah, it's like, I mean, it's a free event in a park in a place that seems like New York or Chicago or one of those places. So yeah, of course it's going to be, you know, showing a lot more. Yet another virtual Rhapsody, uh, meme that we have here, just keeping the memes going. It says how they make money, gaslighting, negligible, not a form of harassment. There's no favoritism, overpriced floor quality, snake oil sales, uh, the, you know, the stuff that happened, uh, the meet and greets and the really poor, uh, charms, I guess we would call them. And that's how they make money. Of course. Now, is Niji Sanji a that, that word that they're mentioning there? I don't think so. It's just a regular company. But some people do treat it with uh, too much reverence that some people could consider it a cult. Uh, personal fun, Harshi hold, Har Harshi hold the lure responsible for the black stream. But I have my own theories about her behaviors. I think she was possibly forced into it. Who knows? Here's another one of uh, your company could not survive your latest business blunders. And so last month you bellied up and let your firm go under. Despite the loss you must have felt, despite the stress and strain, that bonus that you gave yourself will surely ease the pain. You walked away a billionaire and didn't lose a yen. Your firm's investors got wiped out. But hey, who are those guys again? Because this is uh, a greeting card that made for Tazumi's inevitable cold and parachute, which he's going to have. Price investors with workers. Investors are also largely responsible for the, custom, the the scummy behaviors because they're pushing stuff like that, you know? And yeah, of course, you know, you can't uh, let your investors really control everything, but they're the ones who control a lot. 
on a bit of Nexus news, I'm going to cover two things right now. One is uh, Orphe saying some interesting thing about Nidisanji Ian members that she would smash, and another one about some interesting topics that another person would do. What do you guys think? Should uh, what do you guys think about my answer about Box Akuma? That she would I smash mean, on his, Box Akuma. Uh, de- uh, Avatar debut version one, I would smash. <laughs> <laughs> debut version one. Okay. Okay, I even. Am I into those? Yes, I'm into those. I'm into guys that wears uh, glasses. <laughs> oh dear. I'm in trouble. I wear glasses too. I'm in trouble. Yeah, I don't mind. <laughs> okay. Uh, Ike Evelyn, yes, I would smash too. I'm into, I'm into witty guys and also glasses. Meaty guys and glasses. Okay. And okay, okay. next one would be uh, Mr. Rias. Okay. Everyone's Mr. Rias. Uh, yes, I would smash. <laughs> <laughs> I like his humor. Not gonna lie. He's kind of funny. I mean, that's, that's, that's cool. Luca, if you want to uh, smash, smash. Go I'm ahead. I'm sorry, Luca fans, ahead, but I'm not into you, Luca. Okay, Shu. Hmm. Sorry, Shu friends. I'm I'm, I'm not into Shu. She's not into Shu. I would smash. Poor Shu fans. I, I mean, I'm, I would pass. I'm sorry. Pass. Pass on Shu. Luca, she doesn't know either. So it's like not knowing the recording her taking one Renzotto and going, yeah, I'd 100% smash him. So Renzotto as well. She'd smash. Now, moving on to the next one that I want to talk about. Uh, there are some wild topics, man. Imagine my surprise when I found out that that word weren't just what we call Zion Lanza fans. Uh, culture shock. Online political debates are so confusing for me. It's more confusing than keeping up with the uh, that uh, LGBTQ plus updates. I was watching Depressed No Sagi, and I think someone called Kotoka but purple uh, called her called Inaria Lilialis uh, Kotoka but purple. At least I can take that mean to mean I'm pretty. Uh, and I'm a feel, bro. You just debuted, and I think everyone wants their account to stay up for longer than a few days. Cancellation speed run. So yeah, they're they're having some fun. They're poking some fun at themselves. Nexus guys they, and girls, they got mistreated because of the fact that they were pushed 27 in three days. They are all looks like some interesting people, but 27 in three days does not help you at all. Um, what is it with VTuber agencies and hiring the most bat s in chain people they can come across? Fastest way to graduate or termination. I called it the talent either eat each other alive or just dive straight into controversial topics to stay relevant. Yeah, I mean, you can do that. You can definitely do that. Agency has taken some steps. Are they good? No. Uh, steps towards open pit? Maybe. Thing I want to know is, are they intentionally trying to phase to be phased or is this all according to Keikaku? Parrot, please, I want to stop doing all my Niji videos. Monkey paw curls. <laughs> That's, yeah, because now he's going to be doing Nexus videos. Imagine being nobody in this industry and you're actually acting like a POS. I swear every tubing gave idiots like this a boot. Oh, this person doesn't like them. Okay, I see. We got politics, minor bigotry, and making fun of canceled. What a great start. They must be jealous of the headlines that he's making. Oh, there's some people who really hate them. Look at the shorts on their official channel. They use images, clips of indie and hollow VTubers. Also clips from anime as well. Stock footage of real people. All shorts of style tips for VTubers. So it begins, Battle Royale. This is Nexus official shorts. Oh, okay, so yeah, they're, they're doing it. Oh, okay, so that's the way they're doing their shorts. So it seems like, it almost seems like a rug pull, honestly. It's, it is going to be a battle royale. It almost seems like a rug pull, which is unfortunate for the Nexus talents. Hopefully they can go indie after that and enjoy some sort of uh, positivity. That is all for right now. Of course, comment, like, and subscribe down below. Thank you for being here. Of course, I love having the conversations with you guys. I love having these things with you guys. And I do appreciate it whenever you guys do comment. Take a look at my description for my socials. There's a Discord. There's Twitter. There's other places that you can check me out. Twitch, etc. And also check on your screen right now because there might be a video that you might enjoy. Thank you.